Last night happens. Last night happens. But overall, Shasky, what a 24 hours here in the Bay Area. We're discussing yesterday, you know, the unfortunate uh, mutual parting with Rennell Brooks Moon, the only PA announcer in the history of Oracle Park after 24 years. And a lot of people supported her. She texted me back and said, thank you so much for the love. And it was good to hear from her. And I didn't want to bother her. I don't want to bring her on the show right now, man. She's got a lot going on. But then as I'm at the Warriors game, this red to fed, this roaster, this kid, he goes, hey, Bonte, what's up, baby? The Giants think about Blake Snell. I'm like, what? Blake, which we kind of was, he was lingering out there and there was talks and, you know, we've been decent since I just think that the Giants are not going to land one of these free agents, but they land Blake Snell and he agrees to a two-year, $62 million deal 10 days before the Giants open up a regular season. Well, nine days now as he is the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner. So now you get Logan Webb and Blake Snell as a one-two punch. We'll see what you get from Kyle Harrison. You'll see what you get from Jordan Hicks. Uh, your fifth spot, whether it's Alex Cobb or Robbie Ray when he comes back. All, the ro- all of a sudden, the rotation looks a hell of a lot better than it did just, say, two days ago. Blake Snell is... An unbelievable upgrade. And there's going to be a lot of cynics out there like, well, he's had some down years in between his Cy Young performances. Yeah, and even in his down years, he's, what, a three? You know? Yeah. Now, now this is what he truly is, though. He's a five-and-dive guy. He's not a guy that's going to get you into the seventh. Logan's a guy that'll get you into the seventh. Logan had, I believe, 13 or 14 um, appearances in past the seventh inning, which led Major League Baseball by over five. Um, And I look at Blake Snell, and he's a guy, he'll get you through five. But if you're just looking at a rotation right now of Logan Webb, Blake Snell, the young man Kyle Harrison, Alex Cobb, Jordan Hicks, with the opportunity to add Tristan Beck and Robbie Ray down the line, because you have to have six or seven starters. You you, you can't go into a a season thinking five guys are going to get you the whole way. Or at least six or seven that could get you five, right? Exactly. I look at that. And I'm like, okay, you want to be able to neutralize what the Dodgers have, neutralize the young speed that Arizona has, the high prolific bats that San Diego has? Well, you better play great defense, and you better pitch. Well, adding Blake Snell adds to your pitching. Adding Matt Chapman adds to your defense. Adding Jung Hu Lee adds to your defense. And you've added contact because you're getting rid of some of the strikeouts by adding a guy who puts the ball in play in Jung Hu Lee. You've added power with Jorge Soler. I mean, I not that I'm all in on Farhan or anything, but you have to tip your cap when the guy has an offseason like he's had. He added a frontline starter. He added a power right-handed bat. He added a center fielder who can play defense. He added the best defensive third baseman outside of Nolan Arenado in the game. He added Solaire. You know what? As I'm giving a, 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 a clapping... You know, round of applause for for Hans Zaidi. Great offseason. Great offseason. Now, I know there's the J.D. Davis thing, and and there's a lot of other stuff that, that, you know, who knows what happens with Luciano, and who knows what ends up happening with Matos. Maybe there's a deal in the works. Maybe these guys come up during the regular season. I love where this team's at right now. Well, it's great on paper. Let's see how it evolves into the regular season. It's got to become great on the field, right? And you signed Jung Hu Lee, who we don't know about yet. Signed a six-year, $113 million deal. He's got some hamstring soreness. Let's see if he could check that off and be ready for opening day. All signs point to him being ready for opening day. The Jorge Soler deal, a three-year, $42 million deal. Looks like a bargain for the type of power that he does have. And you've got a guy now with a power bat who could change a game with one swing. Uh, the Giants haven't had that. And now guys like Yaz and like Conforto can slot down and bat in their like, they're not three or four hitters. They should never no, be batting two, no. three, or four. Now you got uh, Jung Hu Lee, who's going to lead off for the most part. Chapman's going to have, look, he's going to have to shoulder the load offensively. We know all we all know about his great defense. He's mm-hmm. going to have to be better offensively for the Giants. I would agree. No doubt about that. But I would we'll, agree. I'm not mad at Wilmer being slotted as a role player down in the order. He still has sneaky power. Let's see what LeBall Wade Jr. does at first base. But on paper, the Giants are a heck of a lot better. Now on paper... All of a sudden, I think they can compete with the likes of the Padres and the Diamondbacks. Dodgers, they're in a league of their own right now. But can you at least, you know, go close to 500 against the Dodgers? We'll see about that. But the playoffs in a league like this where you got the Braves and the Phillies, Marlins are a dark horse. Mm-hmm. The NL Central, who knows what's going to happen in that division? It's, it's, Whether it's the Cardinals, it's Cubs, feels Reds? like a division in transition. The Reds, like they're the all Reds. young. Yeah, they're they are young. young. They're though. very young. They're I young agree. with I a agree. lot of talent. So how are yeah. they going to win games on the road? I don't know. 
And then, of course, you got the juggernaut, which is the NLS. And are the Diamondbacks going to be able to replicate the success they had last season? Can they stay healthy? Uh, the Dodgers, of course, are the Dodgers. And then the Padres trading for Dylan Cease. Where are they going to be at a year removed from a, just a massive disappointment they had in 2023? So getting Blake Snell, I'm not mad at it at all. All of a sudden, Farhad did. And, and the whole myth about, hey, you can't bring free agents to, back to San Francisco. Well, it did work. You did bring some free agents to San Francisco. You got four big-time players here. Now, I don't know how big-time Jungle Hu Lee is, but in terms of the money and the years and the contract, you paid him like a big-time player. It's true. You're able to lure him from Korea yeah. to the Bay Area. You're able to lure Jorge Soler. I don't know what his market looked like, but hell, he's wearing orange and black this season. You know what I'm saying? Blake Matt Snell. Chapman. Matt Chapman. Blake Snell. So, although I, they may have overpaid for Matt Chapman, he still was able to bring some big boys here. Here's what I would say about anyone like about the overpay. They're all short-term deals, and they all have yep. a lot of opt-outs. So to me, th there's two sides of this coin. There's, hey, Joe, even if these guys ball out, they can all leave. Okay, that gives me flexibility. Yep. And maybe for the next potential free agent or someone who has one year left on their contract, they will see this as a desirable place to boost their, uh, you know, their the interest in that person playing, right? So the other part of that is, like, you're not anchored down by 10-year deals. Look right. at the Xander Bogarts deal. He's right. got nine extra years left. Machado's got, like, eight extra years left. Now, those are excellent players. What, what are years seven, eight, nine going to look like right. for those guys? I'm looking at Chapman right now, and I'm saying, if he has a monster, monster year and he opts out, Great. The yeah. Giants will benefit from that, right? Here's the key for me, though. All of these guys at the big league level, you got all of these veterans that you've added to the mix. What they absolutely have to have happen is Patrick Bailey, behind the dish, has to continue to develop. Luciano, Matos, one of those guys has got to step to the forefront at some well, point. I wonder, does Giants fans even care right now whether or not Luciano produces? Because... The vibe I'm getting from Giants fans, just after the Blake Snell yeah. signing. And Blake Snell last year, again, he was a Cy Young Award winner, 2.25 ERA, threw 180 innings, struck out 234 batters in 180 innings. I'll take 180 for Blake Snell this season. It'll be great. Now, that was a career high for him. Keep in mind, 180 innings was a career high. Blake Snell, outside of that, he's had two years throwing 180 innings. Other than that, it's been 128, 128, 129. So injuries is a concern He's here. He's a five and dive it's, guy. You know what I'm saying? But it's, that's it realistic. It's a short term deal. Right. Yeah, no doubt. It's a, it's a dive and dive. But he's an electric. Five and dive guy. Oh, he's an awesome player. He's, a, he's an awesome pitcher he's when he's awesome on. Player. When he's on, he's on. So on paper, you do look a hell of a lot better. The rotation looks a hell of a lot better. Uh, and so I, I, there is a new hope for the Giants this season. Now, let's see it. Let's see how it looks against the Dodgers. Let's see how it looks early on with the season. And can they hit? Can they be productive? But I wonder, but the vibe of getting where I was yeah, getting to, yeah, you know, Shasky, yeah. is it feels like Giants fans don't really care whether or not Luciano comes up this year or produces. I almost feel like Giants fans are closer to just calling Luciano a lost cause because uh, cause of the optimism they had of him producing this spring mm -hmm. and being the bona fide starting shortstop going into 2024, and that's not going to happen. Well, I, I would look at it uh, from big picture. You can have all these veterans, right? And I'm, I'm excited, and, and the team should compete. But to me, you have to have multiple young players getting seasoned at the big league level or ready to contribute for the long-term viability. Because, B, let's say, all things, let, let, let's, let's play right. the most optimistic view. Snell, Chapman, Soler, you know, they're all awesome. They all opt out. Yep. Now where are you next year? Mm. Well, you better hope one of these young guys steps to the forefront so you have a, a stability, a, a foundation to build upon moving right. forward. That's why, to me, Kyle Harrison's, to He's me, the pop. biggest guy who benefits from adding Blake Snell is Kyle Harrison. Yep. He gets to see from another left-hander how to prepare every single day. Mm -hmm. He gets to go down a little in terms of matchups. You're not relying on him to eat so many innings. He's going to get threes or fours instead of twos and yeah. threes. Yeah. Now, it's different. Different. When the Giants added Randy Johnson, uh, it, I thought it dramatically helped the Jonathan Sanchez, Matt Cain, Tim Lincecum guys. Forget like what it did for them physically. I'm talking about mentally, how right. to prepare. How what am I, what am I thinking when I'm in that uh, on that bench about how to attack some of these hitters? Right. I, I just I think adding someone like Blake Snell, who's played in big time playoff and World Series games. 
it can only help the rest of the staff. Well, here's Blake Snell, though. The last four months of the season, he threw, by the way, real quick. <laughs> Remember the quarterback doc, Netflix? Yeah. So this year, they're doing wide receivers. Oh, I like that. And so this year, the wide receivers are doing the Netflix doc. Again, the quarterback doc was Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. This season, they're doing receiver. Okay. And the receivers are doing. Oh, my God. The receivers are going to be on display. <laughs> Devontae Adams. Love it. Justin Jefferson. Yes. George Kittle. What? Debo Samuel. No way. Amara St. Brown. Are you that? I'm not kidding when I say you could not have named. Well, wide receiver, but wide Kittle because he's a tight. I want whatever. Tight end slash I'll take receiver, it. Yeah. But I could receiver. not have asked for five better people. It's five, right? Devontae Adams. Wow. Justin Jefferson, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Amara St. Brown. The only guy I would want to add because I think he's kind of crazy, Stephon Diggs. Yeah. Because he's just a little crazy. I kind of want Jamar Chase, too. Oh, that's get to a good know call. Chase. But, B, that's a great... No, this is... This Holy five, moly. Debo, George Kittle, Amaras A. Brown, Chester Jefferson, Devontae Adams. Wow. That's your documentary this year on Netflix. When's that come out? Uh, probably the same time as quarterback. I'm going to be glued to that. Devontae going from Jimmy to Aiden Oh, O'Connell. my gosh. That Detroit game when he gets overthrown twice on wide open deep shots. Today... Did they film it last yeah, year? Yeah, they they follow oh last year. Oh my god, they did it last. Oh, see, I thought it was for the NFL other. films. Wow. Followed them during the 2023-24 season. Wow. So this is produced by NFL Films, Omaha Productions, at 2 p.m. Productions, the team behind last year's quarterback series. I'm going to be watching every second of that. Yeah, no, I think we all are. Wow, I think we all are. All right, black back to Blake. No, Snell I'm glad for a you interrupted that. That uh, was great. So Blake Snell, wow. this final four months of the year. 1.20 ERA. <laughs> I mean, come on. Held up this to a 156 batting average in his final 23 starts. Only allowed, only allowed 19 runs in those final 23 what, starts. What did right-handers bat against him? Because I know he had well, like I a one... I don't have the splits up here right yeah, now. The, but he, the, like it, for the season, it was right. something like 170 but, or 175. But how about this? this? It was the fewest runs allowed in any 23 start span in baseball history. Really? However... I got some nuggets here that, and it says Snell may have a couple red flags here. He did lead baseball with 99 walks. And he's consistently it's, run a higher than league average walk rate throughout it, yeah. his career. Pitch also, count. because he walks and strikes out so many batters, Snell rarely pitches deep in the games. He's averaged 5.3 innings per start the last three years. That's about, almost exactly the MLB average. So, yeah. as you said, a five and dive type of guy. He walks a lot of guys. So, if he can stay away from walk, walks and long at bats, yeah. long uh, counts. Uh. Maybe he can stretch him out to six innings. But again, he's got an opt-out. It's a two-year, $2 million deal with an opt-out after one. Again, I'm just contrasting it to what they had last year. Alex Wood yeah. could not be relied upon. Big-time upgrade. Okay, Manaya, Come on. Like, Snell's Big a Big-time upgrade. Yeah, right? You, who, who's the other lefty that they had? Um, or the other guy? Di Yep. Come on. I, mean, I, I look at their rotation now. Jordan Hicks. Now, Jordan Hicks is a question mark. Who knows? The guy's yeah, never thrown we, yeah, we in know. a starting rotation. I, uh, we will see. I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Plus, he blows 100. Guys like that are fragile, you know? Logan Webb is a gamer. We kind of know what we're going to get from Logan Webb. Blake Snell, Harrison, Cobb, and Hicks. And then you got Robbie Ray coming into the fold, hopefully in the second half. You have Tristan Beck up your... Up well, I don't your, know about Tristan Beck. I'm not going to hype up Tristan I like Tristan Beck. Beck. I, I like him, but I don't... But no, see, to I'm me, he's a swing guy. guy. Yeah, he could yeah, be a I starter. Yeah, he can exactly. also be a guy yeah, who could be a long reliever. He's a wild card for no, me. No, I hear you. So I, don't wanna, I, I was don't impressed wanna, last year. Yeah, but I don't want to bake him into the equation on why the Giants should be good. Tristan Beck, I'm going to just say... I was just whatever, I was like, whatever he does this year, okay. if he's successful, that's a bonus. All right. That's bonus money. You know what I'm saying? That's foul money right well, there I, I look at guys like him and, you know, uh, Yasmero Petit, for example, as, right. as just an example. Those guys are invaluable. George Contos was one of those kind of guys. Like, yep. those guys are very valuable for a staff. And then I look at their... Like, you have the closer. You have Camilo Duvall. Look, look around the NL West. Getting Camilo Duvall, getting to Camilo Duvall is going to be a huge key. Well, here. you got the Rogers the brothers, Rogers you got brothers Ryan Walker, replicated. you got Jackson, yeah. Sanchez, Keaton Wynn. I think they've got a nice diversity of arms in that bullpen. I, I, I much, I feel so much better about their rotation today than I did three oh, weeks ago. Oh my God, it's not even close. I feel better about the rotation than I did yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come true. on, man. Uh, so in twenty-three innings pitch against the Dodgers. Blake Snell, 2.74 ERA. He started four games against the Dodgers last season. Gave up 10 hits in those 23 innings. 
12 walks, though. He would have walked 12 batters against the Dodgers. So the whip was a little, the whip wasn't bad. But 26, 26 strikeouts and 23 innings. And then against the Diamondbacks, you know, it had a 3.0 ERA. Just only pitched one game against the D-backs with seven strikeouts, six innings. Only gave up two runs, but did walk four batters. Against the Giants, he was electric. Uh, 18 innings pitch, 10 hits to give up a run against the Giants. So it's good the Giants have them. On this side of the, uh, in this clubhouse and, here, but I got some trivia for you. Go ahead, Shasky. Well, no, I was just gonna say that, like, I, I, I'm looking at, you know, where the Giants are at right now, and you've got, you know, Snell's a lefty, Harrison's a lefty, and at some point you're gonna see Carson Wisenhunt get a look this year. I don't know what time it'll be. I don't know where. So you got three potential lefties to be in the mix with this team. That's awesome. No doubt. That's no awesome. Doubt. No doubt. So career at Oracle Park, four starts. 22 innings pitch, 1.59 ERA, very small wow. sample size, but batters early, uh, opponents early batting, 151 against Blake Snell. So small sample size, but a good move. I got some trivia for you from our boy over at NBC Sports, okay. yeah. David Teller. David yeah. Teller, he's like me, never sleeps. Stays up late. Hi, David. Wakes up early. Uh, so he's ready to go. He's got some new content now with Giants pre and post game on NBC Sports Bay Area. But here's a uh, trivia question for you, Shasky. Give it to me. What is the last time? A team had the number one and number two Cy Young Award finalist on the same squad. Atlanta Braves, John Smoltz, Greg Maddox. Eh. Is it the Diamondbacks with Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling? Wow! Ding, 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 ding. That's really good. 2003, first That's time good. the team will have the number one and two Cy Young Award finalists on a team since 03. Randy Johnson, Kershley. That That's is good. Sam Lubin. I like that. And that is David Tetler's trivia. Tetler's trivia. I like that a lot. to produce our show. He's looking for your job, uh, Lubin. Might have to give us some, uh, some money, well, 2%. How about D David and I, we can kind of do a little trade-off. He can produce parts of this show and then have me host parts of his show. It's probably not going to work out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Uh, nice try, though. I I'm looking at this team right now, and I'm just like, this is like my projected opening day roster. Like, you got Flores and, and Tyler Fitzgerald kind of as your, like your utility extra infielders. Um, and then you've got Slater as an outfielder. And Fitzgerald will play some outfield. But you're starting with, I'm just going to go, Lamont Wade at first, Tyro Strada at second base, Chapman at third base. I'm assuming Nick Ahmed at shortstop. Solid defensive you know, player. I, I think he's he's better than what Crawford was last year. I don't know how much. We'll, we'll find out. I want to watch him every day. Conforto and left to start. And I'm worried about, Conforto's got to stay healthy. You know, he, he battled a lot of nagging injuries. Well, here's my question with the Giants. 888-957-957. Let me finish. Chung Hu Lee and then yes. Yeah, we know the lineup. We know. I just, it's <laughs> a left, better yes. lineup. It's, a, it's, it's just it's a better, better lineup. Paper, but, but where are they at in the NL West? Where do Giants fans realistically think they slot in the NL West? Are they the second best team? Are they the third best team? C can I? Are they the fourth best team? Where are they at in the NL West right now? With their roster, because it is a lot better than 2023. There's no doubt. I hate I'm a be... lot more intrigued with this lineup with the Giants and this rotation than I was at all last season. Th I think you got some bad apples out the clubhouse as well. This is going to sound foolish, because for longtime baseball fans, it did matter where you slotted in the NL West. But with the playoff format being what it is now, doesn't it kind of, not that it's as extreme as the NBA, like, do you care where the Warriors finish in the Pacific in general? Well, they're different because... You know, divisions in the NBA, we never given a damn about. Yeah. It's always been about the conference. And then when you look at the Warriors, you think about championship mindsets with championship players. So, yeah, the seeds go out the window. It's more of a March Madness feel. Well, but but I, nobody's ever, hey, they're the Pacific Division champions. So, uh, We've never done that in the NBA. But I feel but like baseball's base, different. It, but but the Phillies and the Diamondbacks in consecutive right. years have come out of this right. wild card slotting I mean, and gone on runs. We've I mean, kind of seen it like these well, teams that win the division and they take their foot off the gas for a couple of weeks. 2014 Giants was a wild card yeah. team. Yeah. The 03 Giants were a wild card team. It's just about getting in, but you do have to play better in your division. 03 you won wire to wire, I believe. Went wire to wire. Oh, 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 03, excuse me. Oh, 02. Oh, 02, you're right. Oh, 02 was. Yes, they're, you're right. They're, Diamondbacks won a division. Yeah. Giants were a wild card team that beat the Braves. The next year, they were wire to wire. They got smoked by the Marlins in four. <laughs>